Alright guys, so in this video, I'm going to go over how you can build no-code micro SaaS ideas and I'm going to go through all the steps of how you can find ideas, how you build it, and how you would scale it with the experience of my previous apps and some of the apps that are already in the market that are making over $50,000 per month that have started off with no-code. As a developer, I would code apps myself, but as a non-developer, some of the reasons why you should start a no-code microsoft is that it saves you time and money from needing to hire a developer and then there's the risk of you hiring someone and they're a bad fit and you waste all your time and money the second risk is that it takes more time to launch a project where you need to code it rather than just a simple no-code mvp that you can just test and make money off of immediately. So these are like the two main factors of why you would want to start a node code microsoft. And let me go over the exact details of how you would make it work. The most simple and the highest value way that you can actually start a microsoft is just with a database product. The first example is levels.fyi. This is a recruiting slash compensation database where you can see the salaries of different tech jobs so let's say i want to see how much meta is paying so you can search for meta and it will show you how much they're making so let's see the way that levels at fyi works is that you can see the salaries of these different companies so let's say i want to see how much facebook is making it shows you the number so the other example is nomadless so nomadless is this um, site where it has travel information of different cities and the thing that i want to call out for both of these sites is they started off as just google sheets so levels that i was just a google sheets here is a blog that they made of how they only started off with just a google sheet and nomadless also started off as a google sheet so this is the original sheet that they started off with and you can see that it's all just rows and columns of data. The easiest way that you can start off is just using Google Sheet. And then what you would do is you would monetize that Google Sheet. Fun fact, Exploring Insights also start off with just a Google Sheet. So what I did was I listed the Google Sheet on Gumroad and I put it behind a paywall. And then after people paid, they got access to the Google Sheet. This is one of the easiest ways and less risky way that you can start a micro SaaS and it doesn't require any coding knowledge or any really advanced knowledge of how to set up auth or payments. The strategy is you just have data that is valuable to a certain group of people and then you collect data and you would put it behind a paywall, ideally like Stripe or Gumroad. And after the person pays, they get access to the database. And the second step is once you validate that people actually want the offer or data that you're trying to sell, then you would make it more advanced. You would add more filtering. You would actually add more user authentication. You would make a more advanced payment system. But all that is not needed before you validated your actual offer. So let's say you plan to get your offer first to $10,000. And once you, you get to $10,000, then you find a developer or you make it more advanced, right? So that's the strategy of making it less risky. And this is already proven with sites like levels.fyi and nomadlist. Nomadlist has made over $50,000 per month and levels.fyi is doing over a hundred thousand per month, right? So these are two sites that have followed this path of starting off with a Google sheet and then monetizing it. So let me go over how you actually find ideas that you can turn into these data products. So on exploring insights, you can find categories where people are already paying money for and then turning those into data products. One example here that I just saw is this daily list of startup ideas. And one of the ideas is premium wedding video editing services. So what you can do with this is you can have a database of videos that are really highly edited and use it as inspiration for wedding video editors. So you, you would just create a highly curated list of videos and then you would market it to people that are editors more specifically people that are in the wedding editing niche. But if you want to expand, you could just make a list of just highly edited videos. The way that you sell it is it's a list of inspiration and you would target it towards video editors. So that's just one example. Let's go over some more examples. Let's say you are interested in ad copy. So 
you go into ad copy and you can see what is already selling. So this is a list of Fiverr services that have already been selling. And these are all the total revenue that this service has made. This person has a service called write your ad copy to get results. What can you do from this? You can create a database of ad copy that is already proven and working. So this reminds me of one site that I actually use a lot. So this is a site of old ad copy that made a lot of money already. These are ads that were ran in like the 80s and 90s and it's for all different niches like advertising, alcohol, and all of these other niches. This is just a database of ads. So this is essentially what you could do. You would create this valuable asset that you would sell to people that are in the advertising or copywriting niche. And this would help them make more money because they can see what is already been making money in the past. So again, this is like just another example of using data as inspiration or ways to help people make more money. Let me try to find one more example. So let's say you're not interested in ads and you go through categories and try to find another niche. Let's do online tutoring. Okay. This pulls up all the services that have already made money. We can sort it based on the revenue. This one is help you create an online course. So let's think of how you can turn this into a no code micro SaaS database product. The problem is people have issues creating high quality courses and this person has already made $80,000. This is a problem. And if, if you get this solution correct, people will also pay you money. So let's think backwards. People don't know how to create courses or they are unsure of what makes a good course. So what can you make a database product out of? You can create a database of, let's say the most profitable courses on Udemy. So Udemy is a site that allows you to buy courses of all different topics from Python to art to video editing and whatnot. So you can create a database of the most profitable courses that people have sold and people can use that as inspiration. Or you can create a database of the most profitable video course ideas. So let's say someone is interested in creating course but they don't know what to create the course on. You can scrape Udemy and have a list of topics all the way from like Python to art. And then you can have a separate column of how much money this category has made. So let's say Python has made over $100,000, art has made over $50,000. And then you can sell this database or all this data to people that are interested in starting a course, but they're unsure of what to start the course on. So this is just an idea slash slash inspiration of what people can create a new business that they can sell their knowledge from. So these are just like three really quick ideas that I just thought of off the cuff, but the idea is the same where you, you find a problem, you turn that into data in the form of a Google sheet, you put it behind the paywall and then you make money and then you scale from that. You, you don't scale before the validation is done. Let me know if you guys need a follow up video on this. Hopefully that was clear and yeah, see you guys.